We're near the end of the series now and we're going to have a look at some fun challenges. I'm going to give you some examples of things that you could potentially have a go at doing and try every now and again. All right, so the first one we're going to have a look at is a mixed grip challenge. So the idea is we're going to start with a normal pull up and we're going to do four or five different pull up progressions, each with a different grip. OK, so the first one would be our normal pull up from here. You pull up and you come back down. Once you're at the bottom, now the idea is to change one of your hands. OK, from here you pull up, you come down again, you change your grip. So you're now both hands on the other side, you pull, now you're doing a chin up, you come down. You now then go back to putting that hand on the front, so we're heading back towards doing a pull up, and again, you pull, and back down, and then finally you go back to the pull up position, and back down. So that's one round of doing it and you can make this as hard as you like. Usually again five sets of this will give you a really nice kind of challenge and something to have a potential go at. So this fun challenge is essentially five sets. You keep going, you try and get through it and also you can limit the amount of time and rest you put between each one of those sets. The great thing about that particular challenge is the fact that you're going to be practicing different grips and you're going to get fatigued, your forearms are going to start aching, your grip is start, going to start to ache. It's a great way of getting used to all the different muscle groups in the pulling. Lots and lots of fun. Give it a go. So challenge number two is what we call add-on. So the idea is that you are going to do one particular pull-up type progression. Once you've done that one, you do it again plus another one. So you do then two, and then you do three, and then four, and you just keep going, trying to put in as many different progressions of a pulling action on the bar as you can, okay? So first one, let's just do a normal pull up. So from here, you hang, pull up, and down. For the second one, we will then do a pull up, followed by a chin up, okay? So progression number two, so stage two, you hang, pull up, you change your grip to the chin up, and then up and down. So number three could be skin the cat, you could do turns, you can do muscle ups if you can do that. There's lots and lots of variations. We've done loads of those in the previous videos and just your imagination is going to come into play here trying to keep adding more and more and more and you just keep going until you can't do any more challenge number three is very simple i'm sure that most of you have heard of this kind of concept but it is essentially what we call a ladder now the idea with this is you pick one of your pulling actions and you start moving up in numbers of reps so first one you just do one rep you take a rest, next time you do two reps of that. Take a rest, then three, four, five, however many you want to go up, you can go to five, maybe 10, 15, whatever you think you're able to do, but then you make your way back down the ladder. So you have to go from one up to let's say five, and then from five back down to one again, and you're only finished once you've got to the one again. That one heavily focuses on more kind of muscular endurance and endurance based stuff. So you're gonna be doing a lot more reps down the line when you get from one to five back to one again. So in my classes, I try to put in some unexpected things and try to put a little bit more planning into them just to make them yeah, unexpected and make them interesting for my students. So, one of the things that we've talked a lot about is range of motion and making sure that you're doing full range of motion. Now with your students, what you can do, or yourself if you want to, is you can incorporate some tools and props to make sure that those students are doing the full range of motion. Now a really fun way of doing this is actually down here, I have a carrot. So the idea would be to hang the carrot 
above the bar. So you'd have to make sure that you've got some string, you can tie the carrot, and every time your student goes above the bar, it's just high enough for them to take a bite of the carrot. This way, you know that it's fun, you know that your student is doing the full range of motion, and it adds that kind of unpredictable kind of element to the classes where it's a lot of fun with everybody involved. Obviously, it doesn't have to be a carrot. You can think of other ways, potentially, if you can get something where the student can touch their head or something else, doesn't matter, or potentially even down below. If you want them to make sure you're going to the absolute bottom, you can get them, if the bar is higher, to touch their toe on something, and it essentially makes sure that they go the full range at the bottom too. Challenge number five is one of our favorites, and that is the big numbers. This is the ones where it's very, very long periods of time, and you're having to do huge endurance-based things. And this is a staple in our uh, parkour movement world. Challenges, we try to uh, see, push the envelope, and see how far we can get with this kind of stuff. Um, and one of the ones that we've done is 300 in two and a half hours. So two and a half hours is 150 minutes, and you have to do 300 repetitions in 150 minutes. So it's roughly two repetitions per minute, if that's how you want to do the maths of it. This you can do in many different ways as well. You can decide that you're gonna do a certain number every five minutes, or you could do a certain number where in one minute and then you rest a minute. Um, totally down to you how you break up those numbers. The other big number one is a thousand. So again, no time limit, but essentially how long will it take you to do 1000 repetitions? Now, again, it will probably take a good day dedicated to it, but it really will test your endurance and see what you're really made of. So finally, number six, again, I'm gonna pull out another tool here, and this is something I like to use every now and again, and the idea is that you can use a dice or a die or multiple dice. Um, so essentially what you can do, you can use these in many different ways. If you pair your students up, you have or you have a partner, you can use the normal six-sided die to each roll once. And whoever gets the lowest number of the two of you, Essentially, that's how many pull-ups they have to do, okay? So say I roll a six and my friend rolls a four, my friend is gonna be doing four pull-ups. You go, once they've done the four pull-ups, you roll again, whoever loses, again, has to do that number of pull-ups. And you just keep going until the person or one of you can't do the number of repetitions that is um, on the die, okay? so. Again, it just means the maximum you will be doing is five repetitions. And if you get uh, the both the same number, you just roll again until one of you wins or one of you loses. Um, again, it will balance out with who's the winner and who's the loser every time. Uh, you might find there's a few kind of runs of one person having to do all of the pull-ups. That's just the way it goes. But um, this one could be a lot of fun. And uh, again, it's... You could argue that it's competition, but it's fun competition and it's not something where we're looking for a winner. It's more just a training technique. So the de second dice is this big one that I have here, which is a 30 sided dice. And what you can do is start allocating numbers to number of reps to that one and use the one to six dice for the actual exercise or pull up that you're going to do. So you could allocate, say, a pull-up as number one, a climb-up as number two, and so on on the six-sided. So you roll that and decide what one you're going to do. And then the big 20-sided one is going to dictate what number of reps you're going to be doing of that particular type. Um, again, this can be uh, this can be a lot more endurance based and it can suck sometimes. But again, it's a good way of uh, adding in a little bit of randomness to your training. So that's it. Six challenges that you can potentially have a play with with your students or yourself. 
something you could just throw in every now and again. It's kind of nice to break up the monotony of every single time doing the same training. This is gonna push those boundaries a little bit and just increase the engagement in your students and just add a little bit of fun.